We're in the process of fabricating this um, DIY high voltage capacitor. <clears throat> Explanation of what we're doing here is we've got a capacitive plate on the outside here and one here. And with the center element, I'm creating a bridge between these two capacitors. Now, when you have two capacitors in series with each other, you wind up having half of the capacity, about half of the capacity, a little less, and you have twice the working voltage. So that's the advantage of a butterfly type of capacitor. Now contact resistance is very important in the capacitor when you're using a MLA. You want as little contact resistance as you can get. Here's an example of a butterfly capacitor center section which is made out of one continuous piece of metal. So there is really no contact resistance involved here. The electrons flow from the outside capacitive element through the glass to the inside through the single sheet and out through the other capacitive plate. So that's the advantage of fabricating like this. In this one, <clears throat> I cut the top of the jar off so that I can get the elements in, but I'm going to go ahead and solder the three elements that uh, create this together. So I'm going to have contact resistance here, where I would not have that contact resistance in the single element. By the way, this is 18-gauge um, galvanized steel. Here is an example of a, another capacitor that's being used as a butterfly. And what you can note here is each one of these veins has contact resistance to the center shaft and the center shaft to ground. So if you are going to use this not as a butterfly but as a single variable capacitor section, you would have all of that contact resistance to be concerned with. Now as a butterfly you don't have quite as much because you're going from one set of veins through the center section to another set of veins. Whereas each section is a hundred picofarad the resultant is going to be a little bit less than 50 picofarad but the working voltage is going to be twice as, as high. I'm using this little dowel as a forming tool to make sure that I have very close contact on the glass surface. That uh, dramatically affects how much capacity you get. If there's any kind of void, you're going to lose the capacitance. And when I'm finished, I'll put the bottom of the jar back on and glue it on with probably clear Gorilla Glue just to keep it uh, sealed up. With these types of jars, they do have a vacuum seal, which will help keep a lot of the moisture out and uh, spiders and things like that. So that's it for now.